I think everyone can agree things aren't going so well in the United States. The only issue is we can't really agree on why. Was it Obama, Bush, Clinton? How far back do you go? Increasingly, I'm going back to 1971. It's a date that's been highlighted by venture capitalist Peter Thiel and Mark Andreessen as a major turning point for the United States. 1971 is when Richard Nixon was in office. It was the breaking of trust between the U.S. government and its populace. 1971 was the year that the U.S. got off the gold standard. 1971 was the financialization and deregulation really took off in our economy. 1971 really was the America's end of the optimistic period. Nothing really signifies the end of optimism more than the last human visit to interplanetary space in 1972 with the return of Apollo 17. At the time of Apollo 17, nobody cared. It was our, fit, our sixth trip to the moon, and well, yeah, it was cool. Astronauts could live on the lunar surface for several days and drive a car around the public, had long since moved past. The Nixon administration made it known to NASA after Apollo 11, joy rides to the moon, they're over. The public was over it, and the cost was too high. There were no realistic plans to go to Mars. Since then, space travel has languished. We've essentially spent the last 50 years trying to recapture the glory of July 1969. We pulled off perhaps the greatest feat in the history of mankind. And since then, the history of NASA has been a snooze. The NASA geeks will say, yeah, but we launched this probe and that. We put a camera on Mars. Sorry, I honestly don't care that much. Nothing will be as cool as landing a human on the moon. Or we have a new telescope. Telescope, Again, that's fine. Taking higher res photos doesn't get me or the rest of the world going. NASA today simply reflects back the society we are. Stagnant, corrupted by bureaucratic incompetence and woke politics. Unable to unite the world in a mission and give people a reason for hope. Trying to recapture the glory of our past rather than something new. And it's that vein that I discuss what I guess today is supposed to be a big day. NASA is officially beginning the process of returning an American to the lunar surface. NASA is scheduled to launch an unmanned Orion space capsule on top of its newly developed SLS rocket for a trip around the moon. The spacecraft is scheduled to orbit the moon for a 42-day journey before returning to the Earth and crashing back into the ocean. NASA is billing the rocket launch as a major event and the first of three flights that will ultimately culminate with a landing on the moon in 2025. There's just one problem. Those of us who are familiar with the original Apollo program can't believe how unbelievably slow and uncreative this whole thing is. Let's consider this. The first successful unmanned probe to reach the moon by NASA took place on January 30th, 1964. Seven months later, an unmanned probe called Ranger 7 orbited the moon to take pictures and send them back. You could say, okay, well, this is a rocket test. Even then, consider the timeline of the original Apollo missions, which used the Saturn V. The first unmanned launch and test of a Saturn V rocket took place with Apollo 4 on November 9, 1967. The next breakthrough mission came one year later with Apollo 8, when American astronauts circled the moon in Christmas 1968 and took one of the most breathtaking photos of all time. Consider NASA's schedule today, rocket launch. The next one then is not even scheduled until 2024, two full years later. That mission is what? Recreating Apollo 8, sending four astronauts to circle the moon and come back. They won't even fly there. 53 years after Neil Armstrong landed on the moon, the Artemis II mission is less technologically advanced than Apollo 10, which not only circled the moon, but included a full testing of entering the lunar orbit and in the cast of case of 10, coming back and then going within 50,000 feet of the lunar surface. After NASA's recreation of Apollo 8, they then plan to recreate Apollo 11 with the final landing sometime in 2025. Their selling point, and I'm not kidding, is well, Artemis 3 is different because this time we're landing a woman and a person of color on the moon under the American flag. That was literally the reason cited by President Biden in his budget request to Congress as why additional billions were required to keep up the mission timeline to accomplish a box check of landing a woman and a person of color on the moon, not to, you know, further the advancement and knowledge of humankind. It's insane. They want to, we didn't want to do it for beat the Soviet Union or to unite the world in the idea of what's possible. It's a literal diversity checklist. To be clear, I'm not arguing against these missions. I guess they're better than nothing. But when I consider the timeline and the majesty of the original Apollo missions, I can't help but laugh and cry at how pathetic this all seems more than 50 years later. As for the next step, they have their heads in the clouds. The current NASA timeline estimates a manned mission to the Mars will occur sometime in the 2030s or 2040s. Whatever. Might as well be fake. They have no plan at all. 
What made the Apollo missions incredible was how meticulous they were in building towards a goal. Apollo 4 tests the rocket. The next one tests another system. The next one puts men inside of it. Then we circle the moon. Then we test it tests each part of the landing, and then we land on the moon. Boom. Apollo was undergirded by a strong, a confident, a booming America, simultaneously worked through its worst wounds and fulfilled its greatest promises. Since that time, we've simply lost that. How else can you explain longer, taking longer to accomplish feats 53 years later with technology that is supposedly light years ahead? 1971 really did change anything. Go check out W2F Happened in 1971.com. Look at some of these charts. Up until 1971, wages and GDP growth, one to one. After 1971, they changed. Up until 71, income gains were widely shared. Today, inequality is almost as bad as the Gilded Age. My personal favorite is this. A new house cost $25,000 in 1971. The average income was $10,600. A new car, $3,500. Average rent, $150 a month. Tuition to Harvard, $2,600. Movie ticket, buck fifty. Gas, $0.40 cents a gallon. Posted stamp, eight cents. Consider how simply affordable life was for the average American consumer. And with increasing GDP gains equally distributed, it means even cost increases, you were okay. Today, good luck for paying for anything on that list on a median income for a family. And also consider in 1971, women didn't even have to work to pay for those basic goods. Whatever happened that year put us on the road to today. Supposedly, we have the greatest technology in the history of humankind, but our art is stuck Culture seems obsessed with recreating trends of the past, and we can't even get to the moon as quickly, even though your iPhone is more powerful than the computer that was on board Apollo 11. The technology itself didn't save us, as was promised, and in fact, may have sapped us of the strength that we once had to accomplish the impossible. Whatever comes next, it needs to look more like that. Otherwise, our greatest feat as a society today will just be redoing what we already did, this time with the diversity checklist. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.